Welcome back to Let's Play Higurashi Matsubushi. For those who actually watch this LP, you may be wondering why I didn't upload on the uh, 17th. That was because I slept for the whole day. This is like, well, that's happened before. Yes, it has, but I didn't do any recording in advance. So, I had nothing to upload. I could have recorded right there on the spot at like freaking 11, I think I woke up at. But I was like, yeah, fucking copy ass right now. But here I am, same day, sort of, not really. Well, technically, I woke up at the end of the day, more or less. And it is now nearly 20 past 6 in the morning on the 18th. So, you know, get some recording, you know. Have you ever had this experience? You know what, just click continue. Get to the uh, actual uh, novel itself. So we don't have that blast and take a going... <laughs> Right, uh, tips, whatever. So, like, uh, do you ever had this experience with a vi- uh, I was about to say, visual novel, then? <laughs> with vivid dreams, nightmares, where you, like, go from one dream to the next. And then to the next, and 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 you're just like, what the fuck? And it feels like it's going on for days, but it's only a few hours. Because that is... How would I describe it? It was like I was aware I was in a dream and the whole freaking point of it was me just like going I've got a turkey dinner outside of these dreams I have man I gotta wake up at some point that isn't too late in the freaking day which ended up happening and I was like really kind of aware of that and like it was as if my mind was fucking with me because one point I went from, like, outside a building with some weird shit, I can't remember where I was, to being in my house at a dinner table, and I was like, hmm, am I awake now? And then I was like, wait a second, we never eat at the table, damn it, it's still a dream! It's just like, kept going from one scenario to the next, it was just like, god damn it, I just want to freaking get in my ass up so I can freaking eat! Ever have that experience? It's so weird. Anyways, word of the day. Also, I calculated a bit as well. If this LP, this uh, question arc goes on for four more parts, then it would technically be uploaded on Christmas. Not this part, though. But, uh, whatever. How about... Naga. Long. Suffix, whatever the fuck very kind person. Actually, let's look for kind then. Very kind. Kind? Kind, where are you kind? the wrong type of kind <laughs> it's like what kind or it's kind of and all that but not as in kind as in he's a good person yes how about just good 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 is just e e e e e. e. <laughs> if you ever if, if you've watched any anime or anything like that, you probably hear that or any Japanese program or anything that involves people speaking in Japanese. That kind of comes up a lot, doesn't it? It's like e. Just whatever they're saying, oh, it's good, this is good, that's good, e e e e e e Just two E's, so it gets a drawn out feel to it, I guess. Anyways, patients admitted to the hospital can only accept calls at a fixed times. That's why she wouldn't be receiving a call from him today. 
It's the itchy it teased him that he got lonely easily, so he might have struggled with the idea of calling her sooner. Oh, I think this is Yuki. That was much easier to imagine rather than that he might just be too busy to call. Because he's just that type of person. Yuki whispered that smile to herself. The yeah, announcement that visiting hours were over played over the hospital in the calm along with some music. Just... <laughs> It's picture just like music at hospital. Everything's all relaxed, then suddenly, <laughs> just really ridiculously over the top, heavy metal. What genre would that be? That has that crazy. Is it death metal or is it different metal? There's just so many subgenres I have no idea. But another you know one I'm talking about has those really intense kind of drum beats that sound less like or anything like that. It just like sound like you just. It's like he's freaking got like the drumsticks and just like <laughs> like banging on a door because how freaking fast it is and the guitar's just like distorted as fuck and the vocals just like fuck you yeah! and shit like that just completely over the top. Anyways, she exaggerated prisoners with a family of her patient that was staying in the same room as her. As the bird gives me an odd look. <laughs> Bird's just like, what the fuck was that? Probably, uh, wait, no, patient was staying in the same room as her. Probably eager for his mole to be discharged. And that small child was wearing a beaming smile. That child's mole was pregnant in the bed next to mine with what may be their new brother or sister. They were probably ready to burst through the expectations, dreams, and worries of having a new sibling. The joys of a growing family. Bathing in those warm feelings, I stroked my own belly, which had grown quite large. I had talked with him about how many children he wanted to have. We talked about how if we had three, it would certainly be lively. However, there was the inescapable worry of whether I would be able to handle giving birth that many times. There is no mother out there who would hate to give birth because of that worry, though. Yuki smiled, though she said that it was so gently stroking her stomach. A bit troubled in police safety, public, I mean, safety division. A place where that man's sense of justice had led him. That person was actually a very gentle, a very fragile person. He didn't talk much about uh, specifics, but I didn't think he was suited for the assignment he was on right now. But as long as he said he was going to try his best, I would watch over him warmly. Oh, she's talking to the baby. Your father, you see, is a very hard worker, you know. Coochie coochie coo! Yuki seemed to be enjoying herself as she talked to her own belly. At that moment, Yuki suddenly became concerned about something and looked out the window. It used to be this time, long ago. She remembered that when she was little around this time in the countryside where her grandma lived, the Igarashi would fill the air with their chorus. This was the middle of Tokyo, and like in the countryside, you couldn't hear the song of the Higurashi. For some reason, at that moment, Yuki felt that she wanted to hear that song. It's a shit song, though, man. It's a song that goes nowhere. Now, the fact that the achievement hasn't popped up gives an indication that there are still more tips to come. That was my first time losing consciousness. You often hear of regaining consciousness on top of a bed, but this was my first time actually experiencing it. I'm not sure if I've experienced that myself, to be honest. Hello, are you okay? Realizing that I was awake, a young doctor called out to me. I didn't intend to respond, but it seems my body language uh, told him I was conscious. Peaceful music with a string assembled in the background in C major. I think it is that way. Maybe it's A minor. Same key, more or less, just, uh, well, it's not, but they have the same notes. Whatever. My head was wrapped in bandages. The scratches all over my body had also been treated. My sense of pain was also returned, uh, pain also returned with my consciousness, causing me to groan from the intense pain shooting all throughout me. Don't try to get up, just stay lying down, please. It seems that you took quite a few blows to the head. 
I want you to stay rested so we can monitor your condition for at least the next 24 hours. Well, where is this? This is my clinic. Pleased to meet you. My name is Irie. I remember that this young doctor was the one in the uh, ha car headed the opposite way earlier. Is there somebody here? Oh, where's Oisu Sam? Ah, I'll call him over. There's no smoking inside the clinic, so I had him smoke outside. Dr. Ire left the room to go call Oishi. The scenery outside the window was tinted with gold. The pouring rain had stopped with the voices of the Higurashi heralding the cooling temperature. I felt that the tone of the Higurashi's voices was comforting. Eventually I could hear heavy footsteps coming closer, which I reckoned to be Oishi's. The fog that was enveloping my head slowly faded back to reality. What had happened since then? What had happened to the boy? What about the reinforcements from Tokyo? The door to the room flew open, allowing Dr. Yeri and Oishi to enter. So there's no serious damage, is there? I can't promise that. I assessed ah, the wound to his head was dangerous the moment I saw it. Got it, got it. I want to have a little chat alone with him for a bit, would you mind? Yeah, go ahead. Call me if anything happens. If you have to basically force him, Dr. Eerie outside, shut the door. How are you feeling? I did something I'm not used to, so I'm pretty banged up all over. <laughs> she brought over a folding chair that was leaning against the wall and sat down beside the bed. Were the perpetrators arrested? Unfortunately, no. They've probably already fled the prefecture, or are being hidden by the villagers. Well, we won't let them get away. <laughs> what about the minister's grandson? They've taken care of him at the station. But your colleagues from Tokyo are rather insistent that nothing be recorded. Jinja-chan uh, doesn't like that too much. <laughs> the kidnapping was a confidential matter, so his custody was also probably being kept under wraps. How the kidnapping of the minister's grandson would be handled, how it would be covered up, treated like it never happened, would be handled by the brass. If this case ended without the nation going into an uproar about it, then our job had been done. The possibility that the minister had negotiated with the perpetrators couldn't be ruled out. But something like that was no longer my concern. My role in this case was over. Uh, sorry for the trouble. You must think that the public safety is rather an unseemly place, don't you? Oh no! We all work in the government's dime. On, I mean. We should laugh to bolsterously. When we first met, I was somewhat prejudiced against Oishi, but now that feeling was gone completely. Maybe this is what we should. It would be more convenient for us if this case was handled properly instead of being hidden away. If that happened, we would be able to have something to go to at the Sonizaki family with, since they would hide it all. Well, if we just start poking around, we'll get all sorts of pressure upon ourselves. What a mess. Are you going to continue the fight against the Sonizaki family after this? Ah, there are all sorts of dark rumors swirling around them, but it's not like I have a personal grudge. Well, yet, anyway. It would be wise not to step on any toes here. <laughs> well, she laughed happily and I couldn't help but laugh along. Oh, that's right, there were this word at the station from the provincial police. Your colleagues arrived at Nagoya and are driving up here right now. You've got your battle scars, so you're being recalled to Tokyo, apparently. That's how it's shaking up. Good job. Your work in Okamir is safely over. Being recalled to Tokyo. I inadvertently breathed a sigh of relief when I heard those words. I'm deeply thankful to your cooperation, Oishi san. Seems the cooperation fee I paid you didn't go to waste. <laughs> I kind of meant that as a joke, though. Oishi took out his wallet, casually pulled out several large bills, and jammed them into the breast pocket of my shirt. This isn't a refund on the collaboration fee here. This is just uh, me giving, uh, uh, giving you, uh, gifting you a little spending money. The booze around here is pretty good. 
Use this to buy yourself a little souvenir. But she flashed me a grin. Your injuries turn out to be not too serious. Call me before we head back to Tokyo, will you? The old man and son of son all said they'd like to sit at the table with you again. Oh my. <laughs> I can't refuse that. And no tricks this time. Just some plain old fun. They always say that. This world is done for if an active officer can cheat that blatantly. <laughs> it's not often that we meet someone who is more than a match for us. It's too bad you're going back to Tokyo. When I heard the words going back to Tokyo from Oishi, I was reminded once again that I was relieved from my duties. Soon Yuki would be given birth. It might still be possible to attend the delivery that I had at one time given up on. When I thought that the pain from my injuries became trivial, I wanted to hurry back to Tokyo and see Yuki at once. And you pretend that your injuries are a bit more serious than hanging around Okamiya for a bit. I can introduce you to a few nice places. Of course I won't make you pay for everything. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, but I'll have to take a rain check on that. My wife is due to give birth any day now. I won't hurry back home. Oh my, oh my! I didn't know that. Then you shouldn't be hanging around here. You have to hurry back home. For a while after that, I wish she asked all sorts of questions about my wife, teasing and bantering with me. Is she is she a guard? Nudge nudge, wink wink. Imagine if it, well, I wouldn't be surprised if wish she asked personal questions like that. Well then, how do you feel? Think you can get up? Yeah, it's not so bad, thanks to you. I can get up and walk no problem. I stood up and shuffled around for a bit, which seemed to amuse Oishi. I just thought that you might not feel comfortable at hospital in Emily's hour. Dr. Yuri has said he wanted you to stay overnight. But we still haven't caught the perpetrators. For the time being, this is enemy territory for you after all. Are you saying this hospital isn't safe? <laughs> well, Dr. Yuri is somebody who is well regarded in the community. I don't think anything will happen while you're here, but I'm more worried about your mental health. I had uh, relaxed, I had a little, I had relaxed a bit now that things had progressed this far, but it was exactly as we she had said. When I realized that this was enemy territory, I suddenly felt uncomfortable. If the only thing left for me to do was leave, the chance that I would come to harm was logically fairly low. But that didn't mean I was completely safe. That's right, if I'm just going to be lying down, then doing it in a hotel bed won't be all that different. Right, right. I also think that's for the best. That moment I caught a glimpse of the clock over Ichi's shoulder. It was evening. The hours when I could call Yuki at the hospital were almost over. I wanted to tell her as quickly as possible that I would soon be back at her side. I wanted to call Yuki at the hospital. Is there a public phone in the lobby? <laughs> you newlyweds are all like this. If I recall correctly, there's one by the register. I'll be waiting here, so go ahead, go ahead. We should laugh him while saying that he was jealous, opened up the window and pulled out a cigarette even though he was in a hospital room. Appreciative at how considerate I wish he was, I set out to the lobby to find the phone. And Hegarashi the lobby was just a short distance down the hallway from the hospital room. I thought that this hospital was a bit too grand for a village like this, but of course, it was nothing compared to the general hospital Yuki was admitted to. Running inside a hospital wasn't the best of manners, but calling hours would soon end, so I dashed over in a hurry. There was nobody else in the lobby. It may have been the evening, but there was nobody at the reception desk. Well, this might actually be lucky for me. I wasn't planning to have a conversation to feel guilty about. But it would still be embarrassing to have someone listen to the conversation between me and Yuki. Taking a quick look around, I soon found the payphone. Digging around in my pockets, I grabbed a few coins. I was calling Tokyo from here, so I would burn through this amount fairly quickly. I picked up the receiver and inserted the coin, then dialed the number for Yuki's hospital, which I had completely memorized at this point. <coughs> The number for Yuki's hospital had a lot of eights and nines, so dialing it in, in inevitably took some time. Yeah, that's this is probably well, obviously late seventies. They probably still had those phones where you go like, tsk, tsk. I mean that's what the worst sound effect is for, isn't it? Just like ah oh, bloody nines eights. 
on the illogical thing like you're in the UK like emergency services like nine 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 so that must be pain in the ass on those old phones normally it wouldn't be a big deal but currently any time was precious however I felt that something was strange as I was dialing in the number I don't know exactly how to put it but it was as if the receiver was too quiet that unique white noise from the telephone line wasn't there Somehow I felt that I wasn't getting any feedback from the phone and without feeling a response, I hung up the receiver to try again. The coin popped out from the return slot. I reinsert the coin and began dialing once again, but the receiver was still dead silent. What is this? Is it disconnected? While I was wasting time like this, the amount I had to spend talking with Yuki shrunk. I began to feel needlessly impatient. Excuse me! I felt the presence of someone on the other side of the glass, so I called out. There was an immediate response, and a man who seemed like a pharmacist came over. Uh, yeah, how can I help you? Pardon me, this phone seems to be acting a little strange. Could you take a look at it? No, wait, what? That's him saying that. The man came over and tried testing various things with the receiver pressed to his ear. Come to think of it, this was someone who worked at the hospital, and not someone from the phone company. Just as I didn't know much about phones, and how would he? Oh, well, what's this? The man held up the cord that connected the phone to the wall. It was completely severed. It was the ominous Higurashi! Did you not hear them? When they came in, the atmosphere took on a slightly ominous feel. What the heck is that? Well, this is a dilly of a pickle. Can't do anything with this until somebody from the phone company comes and fixes it. If you're looking for a phone, do you want to use the one in the office? That's a ro really weird phrase there. The dilly of a pickle. Let's see how it looks in Japanese. Uh, it'd be funny if it literally was just that. Nanda Korea. La 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 da na Korea No blue blue knee blue shit to do ni Blah 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 no blah he must <laughs> I don't think it has a pickle in there or whatever the hell that phrase was. Might have similarish wording, I don't know. I can't fully read the uh you know, conch characters like I like the first one in that uh phrase where it's literally just right there was what? That was the conch character for it. And it's well I think it's used in different contexts as well, where it can be something different. But in that, I suppose it probably was nan. Because that means what, and there's a variety of different ways of saying what. Of course, you know. Anyways. I didn't want the people in the hospital office around while I was talking. Is there another payphone close by? Uh, let's see, if you leave here and follow the road, you'll come out into the shopping district. I think there's a smoke shop on the corner shop, a little, little, little corner around there. If you head that way, you should be able to find one soon enough. I was dressed in a hospital gown. I was wearing sandals on my feet. My head was wrapped in bandages. Just looking at me, you could tell I was a hospital patient. No matter how you looked at it, I was not dressed to be wandering outside. But that's where the independence of youth came in. Choosing the chance to talk to Yuki for even a little longer, I headed outside in my current state. Follow the road to the shopping district. With the ominous sounding Higurashi, should be able to find one soon enough. If only those two lines is my guide, I ran outside the gates of the hospital. With the village nestled in a valley, when the sun set, it got dark quickly. The sparse street lights lit up enough to start attracting moths. The Higurashi, knowing the time for their chorus, was soon at a close, redoubled their fragile cries. I want to see what is the kanji character for Higurashi. I probably won't even recognize it because it would be hard to pinpoint it amongst all the other characters. It doesn't even have it! 
Higurashi. Higurashi. Tachi wa bla 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 tachi no bla 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 no bla 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 gachi kini bla ware koto wa bla 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 te i te nao bla bla be geni bla 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 ki bla keru no ta ta. What's the full title? Higurashi when they cry. It's Naku, I think, is cry. But I'm not sure which character is that. Like sometimes it'll be, have like helpful bits. Like this, for example. I don't know what this character is, but ge ni. That probably feels like to me. This is like added on for emphasis, maybe, and this is added on to this word, but is needed there in order to tell you what pronunciation for this character is in the context. Maybe I don't know. I still don't fully understand characters like that. See if I can recognize any characters around here. Mm, I recognize them, like, I've seen that character, I've seen that character. Um, but I don't know their meanings fully, or their pronunciations and stuff. None that I can recognize off the top of my head. Wait. No, I can't. I don't know. It's actually... Oh. Hmm. See, so notice that character is appearing down here as well. Seems like a quite a common character, that one. But this one right here, I can't tell. Is it the one for Boku? Like, I? Essentially, like the male equivalent of saying that. Kinda looks a bit like it, but I might be remembering it wrong. There's also another use for that character, but I can't remember what it was. Here, rushing in time for that course. We're soon out of clothes. Really don't... Yeah, it must have been something different if that's the case. Finding the payphone wasn't as easy as the person at the hospital had suggested. Was it still up ahead? Did I miss it already? Was I just getting further away? Just as I was about to be crushed by the wave of uncertainty towering over me, I found a shop on the corner with cigarettes written on a small sign. My joy spurred me onwards. Just as I had heard that the hospital sat, sat next to the counter of the cigarette shop was an end a little gated payphone. And I gave it a little I wasn't wearing a watch, so I didn't know what time it was. I probably didn't have much left, though. But it was enough. Just as long as I could tell Yuki my job was done, and I would be coming home soon. Picking up the receiver, I slid a coin down the slot. But I felt that something was strange, just like at the hospital. Even after inserting the coin, the phone showed no response. I hung up the receiver and tried putting in the coin one more time. But there was absolutely no response. This phone was dead. It couldn't be. Thinking that, I felt along the cord that protruded from the back of the phone. Turned that my hands found the end of a completely severed line. What is this? Having now had the same thing happen twice, my bafflement was accompanied by a sense of unease. It seemed that the cord had been severed cleanly by a sharp blade of some sort. And I may be mistaken, but I didn't look like much time had passed since it was cut. Uh, excuse me! Hello! Opening up the booth uh, window of the tobacco shop, I looked for someone in the dimly lit interior. Once again, I've got, I gotta just, gotta look at it in Japanese, gotta see, gotta see, you know. Ah no, sumimasen! Yeah, that is pretty much like the equivalent of just saying, hey, excuse me, excuse me! No. Yeah, it's written in hiragana for some reason, tobacco. Usually that'd be written in katakana though. I, I'd imagine anyway. Blah 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 No, that's a different character, but it has a similar look. Notice some kind of characters kind of look similar. It's really confusing. Blah 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 blah. And see how common that one is as well. Blah 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 blah. 
I think that means person, as I've said before. It's kind of uh, has different pronunciations depending on context, so I just have no idea with it. Like that, right there. That obviously must be referring to someone that character must have been. It's always like, what would be the equivalent of saying, actually, I've got my dictionary for that, haven't I? Maybe it's got something distinctive for someone. Battery's running low, so it's not dilly dally dawdle and all that shit. Someone. Is pronounced Dareka. 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 Yeah. So I guess that must have been where the Kanji character would have sounded like. Maybe. I don't know. Eventually, there were the sounds of somebody blooding down some stairs, and an old lady appeared. The old lady's blooding and lethargic steps, for some reason, only served to make me more frantic. You need some cigarettes, I'll need to get my husband. I'm not here to buy cigarettes, rather this phone here. Realizing that saying the phone was broken and asking him to take a look at it was going to get me nowhere. I swallowed back my words. Uh, sorry, it seems that this phone is broken and I was wondering if you could tell me where there's another payphone. The old lady moved her jaw up and down slowly as if chewing on the meaning of my words. It seemed that she wouldn't understand until she had digested things thoroughly. So the phone is broken. That's a dilly of a pickle. It's <laughs> the same freaking phrase. That's a dilly of a pickle. What is the dilly of a pickle in Japanese, though? What is the dillying of the pickle of the pickle dilly? What? I don't know. Blue <laughs> This is obviously the phrase itself, wherever it may be, I recognize this character. I vaguely recognize this one, I'm not sure about this one though. How confusing, I wonder, does pickle have a different word in Japanese? Pickle, pickle, pickle. I've learnt this word before, but I've forgotten. And I don't even know the counter character for it, if it even has one. We don't have pickles in here by the looks of it. Nope, no pickles. How could you not have pickles? Hmm. Wait, no. Maybe it's in the food section. Um. Where's the menu? Pickles, 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 pickles. Well, there is a. Uh, well, that would be... Wait. Well, there's pickled plum in here, which is ume... Ume... Boshi. Ume boshi. But, um... Well, those characters really fit it. Eh... Any... You know, pickles on its own, maybe? Around here somewhere, maybe? Pickles! Pickles! No pickles there. No pickles there either. We have pickled vegetables. But I don't think that would be the correct word. I have no idea. Essentially. Get on this. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Just <laughs> gotta switch it back to English. Uh, come on, the battery, it runs low. You should try another payphone. Oh, wait. One of those characters was for phone, and I know that one. It's Denwa. The old lady directed me to another payphone. It seemed quite a ways away, but it's a payphone, so it probably has a slightly different wording. Or maybe it just has pay added on to it, I don't know. Her way of telling me was so long-winded that I inadvertently started to get impatient. Sorry man, I had to see if I could translate. At that moment I spotted a clock in the dim interior of the store. The minute hand was just about to point straight up. 
Even if there was a phone right here that I could use, I would only be able to tell Yuki goodnight with the time I had left. On top of that, my destination was a remote payphone, which I didn't know the exact dis at distance to. If I was of a normal state of mind, deciding to give up the phone today would have been uh, the natural thought process. At that moment, I had become somewhat stubborn for some reason, unable to use the phone in the hospital and coming out here and still being unable to use one. There was no mistake and I had become quite insistent on using the phone. Ah, uh, thank you very much. I'll try looking for that phone, ah, uh, that phone booth. Again, we must look into the translations. Or rather, the non-translated. Ah, uh, domo arigato gozaimasu. Because he said thank you very much, so it adds on that bit that, ah, uh, ah, uh, domo bits and the gozaimasu bits. So no, so no, 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 Uh, fuck it. <laughs> it's just like every time I see it, because it feels like it's hard to figure out the pronunciation if it's written in katakana, which is weird, because it's usually used for words that of, uh... Oh wait, that's where it was, if I saw that. It was essentially saying boof, probably, and that's why it threw me off. Refusing their offer to draw me a map, I left the tobacco shop. According to the old lady, even though the phone booth was quite far away, it would be easy to find. I, if I just followed this road straight down, I'd eventually find it. Sandals fla flapping as I ran, I couldn't help but laugh at myself. I admit that I was quite steadfast about calling Yuki. But there were days when I was tired or busy when I wouldn't call her. Even today, my entire body was covered with injuries and I was dead tired. On top of that, there wasn't much time left. It wouldn't be strange at all if today was one of those days I didn't call her. But having twice been foiled trying to call her, had I become hot-headed about it? Was I like a dog who was being told to stay with a piece of food dangled in my face? What am I doing? <laughs> Even so, I somehow couldn't quell the uneasy feeling sitting in the pit of my stomach. It was like that with the hospital phone, and the same with the one at the tobacco shop. Both cards were definitely not severed from being frayed for by long years of use. The clearing cuts indicate that someone had taken something sharp and deliberately cut them. But who, and for what reason? The more I thought about it, the uneasier I felt, so I tried to push the fort aside. How much had I run so far? The scenery around me was no longer that of a shopping district with residential buildings scattered about the lonely road. The surroundings had already grown dark. I was blatantly out too far for a quick phone call, and it was quite obvious I was far removed from the hospital. I recalled the clock I saw at the tobacco shop. It might almost be time. I had run for quite a bit, so my breathing had grown quite ragged. If I had just wanted to hear Yuki's voice, I should have just thrown away my reservations and borrowed the phone in the office. I regretted it a little. Well then, was it about time to give up? Just when I thought that, I saw the light in front of me. I had finally found it. It was a phone booth. It seemed that the light of the phone booth had recently been changed as it shone with a vivid white light. Although in the gloom of Inibi's hour it was nothing more than a gathering spot for moths. But in any case, I had finally found it. As my head touched the door of the phone booth, I realized that I was breathing and sweating heavily. I didn't know what time it was right now, but even if it was just for a moment, I might be able to get in touch with Yuki. Since I had spent all this effort getting here, turning back without ever giving it a try was out of the question. Before I picked up the receiver, another wave of uneasiness washed over me. I was worried about this that this phone cord might be severed as well. I was the cord in this phone booth. Squatting down, I followed a bundle of cords as they ran along the cornering to the ceiling. At a glance, nothing was out of the ordinary. I ran my fingers as far as I could along the line to check it out. The only thing they found was a thick layer of dust. Nothing out of the ordinary. I wondered if it was popular in Hinemi's hour to cut the cords of payphones as a sort of tasteless prank. 
It might be prudent to talk to Oisha San about this later. Even if it was nothing more than a prank, it was still vandalism of public property. In any case, this one is fine, this time. Pulling out a coin from my pocket with one hand, I picked up the receiver with the other. But this time, before the receiver ever reached my ear, I felt something was off. Something! Like a cliffhanger. CLIFFHANGER! <laughs> it has to be a cliffhanger, because otherwise this thing would drag on and my battery hasn't got time for that shit. So, we'll find out what happens in this call. If he even gets to use the phone, we shall see in the next part. So, we'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.